Vice President for Medical Affairs at the University of Maryland and Dean of the School of Medicine. We're so glad to see so many of you here today to celebrate with us the expansion of our research facility here in the University of Maryland campus. While we celebrate this planned building and life-saving research and discovery that will occur right here on this campus. Wow. We're certainly mindful of those who lost their lives yesterday. We're certainly mindful of that senseless death in the Navy Yard in Washington, D.C. And so it seems appropriate to me that we should send our thoughts and our prayers to those families who have lo lost loved ones. I think I'd like to entertain just a moment of silence on behalf of the victims of yesterday. Thank you. With this groundbreaking ceremony today, we're helping to usher in a revolution in biomedicine, where fundamental research, advancement in technology, and collaboration converge. They converge to create new pathways. They converge to create new opportunities for science and medicine, which will dramatically impact human health and well-being while at the same time positively impacting the economy of our state. At this time, I'd like to introduce our distinguished elected officials from our state, distinguished members of our university community, members of the Board of Regents, and members of the, our medical system. If you'd hold your applause until I introduce each group, I'd very much appreciate that. Starting with uh, our elected officials, who are on, on the DS, uh, start with uh, the Honorable Martin O'Malley, Governor of the State of Maryland. And <laughs> I saw that. The Honorable uh, Anthony Brown, Lieutenant Governor of the State of Maryland. And the Honorable Stephanie Rawlings Blake, Mayor of the City of Baltimore. Members of our congressional delegation, we have with us U.S. Congressman Elijah Cummings, U.S. Congressman Dutch Rupesberger, and U.S. Congressman John Sarbanes. We also have a representative from U.S. Uh, uh, Senator Mar uh, Barbara Mikulski's office. So thank you all for being here. <laughs> and from the Maryland General Assembly, we're very pleased to have several members in, uh, present including State Senator Catherine Pugh, uh, uh, State Senator uh, Ed DeGrange, there he is, hi Ed, uh, State Senator Verna Jones-Rodwell, State Senator James Mathias, Jr., State Senator Joan Carter-Conway, State Senate uh, State Delegate and Speaker Pro Tem, Adrian Jones, uh, State Delegate Sean Tarrant, State Delegate Kiefer Mitchell, State Delegate Na uh, Shirley Nathan Pulliam. And we also have Dr. Lawrence Clam, uh, uh, Lamb, one of our own School of Medicine graduates, representing Delegate Dan Morheim. If there are any other elected officials in the audience, would you just raise your hands to, to be recognized? We have uh, the City, the the uh, president of the Baltimore City, City Council with us, and we're very happy that you're you're, you're here with us. So, would you uh, uh, join me in a round of applause for these elected officials? <laughs> I'd like to now recognize our university community and Board of Regents officials who are present, and I want to just take a moment just to thank them profusely for their support. For without which, for without their support, this project would not even have gone forward. So let me start with Board of Regents member Santa Frank Kelly, who happens to be the chair, the sitting chair of the Finance Committee, who certainly was very instrumental in advancing this uh, very important project forward. So thank you, Santa Kelly. Uh, 
any other member of the Board of Regents here with us? I want to give an opportunity in case I overlooked anyone. We'd also like to recognize our Chancellor, uh, Dr. Britt Kerwin on the dais, Dr. Jay Perman, President of the University of Maryland, uh, Baltimore, and uh, Mr. Joe Vivona, the Vice Chancellor, uh, there he is, Mr. Uh, Vice Chancellor for Administration and Finance of the University System of Maryland. And other member of the, the university community is Mr. Michael Cryer, Chairman of the School of Medicine Board of Visitors. Thank you so very much for being here. <laughs> to my dean colleagues, I'm very pleased to have uh, both Dr. Rith, Dr. Rith, Rick Barth, I saw earlier, there he is, uh, Dean of the School of Social Work, and uh, Dr. Natalie Eddington, Dean of the School of Pharmacy. Also, uh, Dr. Mark Reynolds, he is Interim Dean of the School of Dentistry. We're also pleased to have Dr. Donald Wilson, Dean Emeritus of the School of Medicine. I should mention, Don, that you actually seeded this idea, and I'm very pleased to see that we have germinated it well over these many years, and you're here to see the, the fruits of, uh, of that seed. So let me welcome all of you who are here at this time. We also have members of our medical system uh, on the DS, uh, Mr. Robert Krenzig, the President CEO of the medical system, and uh, Jeff Rivas, the President CEO of the University of Maryland Medical Center. Please join me a round of applause for that. I would uh, certainly just like to uh, uh, beg your indulgence for a moment more that I recognize uh, state government officials who are here in the audience. Um, I mentioned earlier, but I'll do it again, Bernard uh, Jack, uh, Jack Young, President of Baltimore C City Council. Uh, we have Councilman William Cole the Fourth, Councilman William Welsh, Councilman Nick Mosby, Mr. Dom, uh, Dominic Murray, Maryland Secretary of Business and Economic Development, and uh, Dr. Oris uh, Barbeau, the Commission of Health for Baltimore City. And also, I'd like to ask all members of the School of Medicine Board of Visitors just to raise your hand to be recognized. Let's uh, have a round of applause for these. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to, uh, to thank and recognize the, the architects, uh, HOK Design Collectives, who designed this wonderful building that you'll see in a moment and will be erected uh, over the coming months and years. The leadership also of the Barton Marlowe Construction Company who will be erecting the building. I want to acknowledge them and to recognize their, their efforts. Finally, I want to acknowledge and thank the leaders and staff who have been helpful in this project and even today's activities. The School of Medicine Office of Development and Public Affairs and also the University of Maryland Baltimore campus uh, Office of Communication and Public Affairs, as well as the University Events Group for their tireless work on this project and also on bringing together this morning's activities. So my thanks to, to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, just join me in a round of applause for all of you who are here and is celebrating with us. Before I introduce our speakers this morning, I'll just make very brief introductory remarks. Suffice to say, your collective presence here today is very meaningful to all of us. It reflects a, a testament of the significance you place on the important role that research plays in the health and well-being of our citizens, as well as the impact it has on our economy. I want to express on behalf of the university in general and the School of Medicine in particular, or sincerest gratitude to everyone, everyone who has collectively participated in bringing this project to fruition. I know many of you who have played your important roles are seated on the dais while there are others, many of you in the audience. You who have worked so tirelessly and effectively can be described as believers, supporters, partners, and advocates. This, is a real, this has been a real team effort with a number of us repeatedly sounding the alarm of the dire need that we've had for space. Prior to this day, 
there has been a good news, bad news dichotomy relative to a research. For example, if we reflect on over the past decade, the School of Medicine has competitively secured and brought into the state and to our institution over $4 billion in external grants and contracts. That's the good news. The bad news is that we have been out of space. We have worked ourselves out of space. So it really is good news to see that this facility will be built in order to address some of these dire needs. But permit me to describe for you very briefly what this building will look like. You'll see it in the, in the screen, but it will be to, to sort of for in, entice your appetite a little bit to keep in, in, in tune with this, the activities. This building will be a 10-story tower, the largest building on the University of Maryland Baltimore campus. It will be approximately 430,000 square feet of research space that is strategically located. It will be located directly in front of the School of Medicine main building, but sandwiched between the School of Dentistry and the School of Pharmacy. In addition, there will be a plaza in front of the building that one can almost envision a social, a social uh, center, if you will, where scientists and colleagues from various schools can really converge and have social interaction, but also intellectual exchange, seeding ideas for the, for the future. Within the portals of this building will be conducted robust collaborative research ongoing across the campus and in fact across the system, the University System of Maryland, and across many schools. And again, because of the proximity, we can envision the continuation of that rich collaboration between pharmacy and dentistry and medicine that creates that, that pod, or quad, if you will. I'd like to recognize, uh, particularly my dean colleagues, uh, my closest neighbors, and that's pharmacy and, and dentistry, uh, Dean Eddington and you know, Interim Dean uh, uh, Reynolds, who undoubtedly will promote and support the continued collaboration that we've enjoyed. What can we expect to see from this new building? The first is that we'll expect to be competitive with our peer institutions nationwide. Secondly, we can expect to retain our top tier status in biomedical research, placing us among the best in the country and the world. Third, we can see us having the capability of attracting an even larger share of federal grants and contracts, which, as you know, is the lifeblood of research at any academic medical institution. And lastly, we'll continue to strengthen our interdisciplinary research portfolio using collaborative teams. With our storied history and reputation, this new building will allow us to look forward and position our institution to achieve even greater success, transforming medicine every day. Let me just take a, a brief moment as I conclude my remarks to acknowledge and commend the Amali Brown administration, and indeed extend on behalf of the university and the School of Medicine our sincerest gratitude for their interest in and emphasis on healthcare reform, of which biomedical research plays a big part, and specifically for enhancing and promoting the bioeconomy of the 21st century. This administration's well-articulated vision and passion have helped to make this project and today's ceremony possible. So let me say, Governor Mali and Lieutenant Governor Brown, thank you very much for your dedicated leadership and your support in this area. And finally, let me pledge to the university and to the state that we'll be good stewards of the confidence that you have placed in us in supporting and making this uh, building a reality. Our first speaker today uh, will give brief remarks, but most importantly, will introduce our governor. And that person will be Dr. Jay Perman, the president of the University of Maryland, Baltimore. Dr. Perman has been a tireless partner in our efforts to secure this building. He has been a staunch advocate and supporter of the strong and collaborative research culture that we enjoy on this campus. Dr. Perman, thank you for your efforts and thank you for your support. Dr. Perman. Al, uh, 
first of all, thank you for uh, what really has been your steadfast leadership in bringing us to this day. This is a proud day for the University of Maryland Baltimore. And uh, on behalf of the entire UMB family, uh, I too welcome each and every one of you. We're delighted to share this day with so many distinguished guests. The University of Maryland Baltimore, the University System of Maryland's founding campus, has experienced robust growth in recent years in fulfilling our responsibilities to the citizens of our state. Here are some numbers that you may find rather astonishing. In 1975, we occupied about 1.9 million square feet of space. Today, we occupy nearly 6 million square feet. And every step of this expansion has enabled us to bring new jobs and millions of dollars in funding to the state of Maryland for research and education. Health Sciences Facility 3, the largest facility in our campus history, further strengthens our footprint on Baltimore's west side and in West Baltimore, and as a result, our economic impact on the city and the state. We're privileged to be able to help revitalize our critically important Baltimore neighborhoods, of which we are a part, and the state of Maryland as a whole, and at the same time enabling biomedical research and education that has the potential to save lives. I have very high hopes for what can happen in this building. Think, imagine the implications of restoring people to good health, preventing disease in the first place, getting the best outcomes for pregnancies and early childhood, enabling us to enjoy our so-called golden years with less disability, less dysfunction, and in promoting scientific collaborations by a diverse group of biomedical scientists such that the power of scientific partnerships is maximized. In that respect, I too want to take a moment to recognize Dean Natalie Eddington of the School of Pharmacy and Interim Dean Mark Reynolds of the School of Dentistry. Researchers and scientists in the schools of pharmacy and dentistry will occupy space in this building and collaborate with their counterparts in the School of Medicine. For all of this, we thank the people of Maryland and their leaders who see the wisdom of building such facilities. Thanks to all of you for making this day possible. And now it is my privilege to introduce a man whose vision has done so much to advance science in our state. Governor O'Malley has been a tireless advocate for higher education, for biomedical research, and we have been the beneficiaries of his support for our educational, our research, and our clinical initiatives. He has a clear understanding of Maryland's potential to be the leader in the biosciences. He has made biotechnology, biomedical research, a priority for his administration. I personally have seen this commitment as I've had the privilege of traveling with him in his efforts in this regard. Governor O'Malley's vision and commitment have been vital in the recruitment and the retention of outstanding researchers to this university. Please join me in welcoming our governor, the Honorable Martin O'Malley. Thank you very, very much. It's great to be with all of you and Merritt. It's wonderful to be with you in the greatest city in America. 
as I want to congratulate not only uh, President Berman and, and the Chancellor, but Dean Reese for his passion in pushing forward with this critical and important investment, really in Maryland's future, Maryland's economic future and Maryland's competitiveness, Maryland's ability to lead this world of ours as we discover and create new ways to feed and fuel and to heal. And so much of that will go on in this building that you and I will build together uh, with our titles of citizens of Maryland. So uh, this is a great day. Uh, let me just share a couple thoughts with you. There is no progress without jobs. And all of us have been painfully reminded of that during this long recession. This building, or I should say the construction of this building, will employ about 3,000 moms and dads who will be building this place where 600 other people will work day in and day out and be able to attract grants and do all sorts of good things. And we hope increasingly that great translational and commercialization work to move the ideas out of the lab and into the marketplace to create even more jobs. We so often hear people talk about science. And by that, of course, we mean the healing sciences as well. But science, technology, engineering, and math, on the jobs front, those sectors are creating jobs twice as fast as any of the other sectors. So that's why it's so critically important that we not only maintain our vision, but that we take the actions necessary to build towards that vision. That to make real that uh, $1.3 billion vision for life sciences and biotech in our state. Uh, there are certain rankings that all of you enjoy as Marylanders. And they did not come to us by accident. They came because of the better choices that your elected representatives made on our behalf. And I'm so grateful to, uh, to uh, the chair, uh, Delegate Jones of the Capitol Committee, and to Ed DeGrange on the Senate side, and to all the members of the General Assembly for the better choices they've made through some difficult times. Get this. Maryland has the highest concentration of PhD scientists and engineers of any state in America. We are number one in research and development dollars per capita. Our schools, because of the investments that we could only make together, have been named the number one public schools in America for five years in a row. More of our children in high school take AP level STEM courses and pass them than at a higher percentage than any other state in America. And it is little wonder, therefore, that none other than the US Chamber of Commerce <laughs> named your state, our state, the number one state in America for innovation and entrepreneurship. This Friday, I hope to be able to tell you that we have now recovered 100% of the jobs we lost in the recession. That will be a milestone, but that is not the goal. The goal is to move even further. Because of the better choices that we've made together, we're achieving better results. And we're among the top three states for upward economic mobility for working families. None of these things happen by accident. In order to create jobs, a modern economy requires modern investments. Investments that educate, investments that innovate, investments that rebuild our infrastructure, and yes, investments like this one that allow us to be leaders in healing this world of ours. Thanks very, very much. Thank you, Governor Mali. At this time, I'd like to welcome to the podium Maryland's Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown, with whom I've had the privilege of working on a number of health-related projects. Lieutenant Governor Brown is a strong advocate for the improvement of health of all Marylanders but especially those uh, most vulnerable. Most importantly, he understands and fully embraces the notion that research and discoveries lead to better health. So at this time, I'm so happy and pleased to welcome Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown. Thank you very much, Dean Reese. I want to uh, thank you for your uh, leadership uh, at the uh, School of Medicine. I also want to uh, thank you for chairing about two years ago uh, a committee that the governor and I formed to address health disparities in Maryland. And because of uh, Dean Reese's leadership, his collaboration, um, his uh, ruthless sort of uh, um, quest uh, 
uh, to find best practices. Uh, Maryland is leading the nation when we establish our health enterprise zones. In fact, if, uh, if uh, emulation is the best, highest form of flattery, uh, we are flattered by the fact that recently, uh, Dean Reese, uh, the District of Columbia introduced a, uh, a piece of legislation to establish health enterprise zones uh, in our nation's capital. So I want to thank you, uh, Dean Reese, for uh, your leadership uh, to uh, Governor O'Malley. Um, it's been truly a uh, true uh, honor uh, to serve with you. And as uh, was mentioned in the introduction, uh, your commitment to uh, improving the quality of health in Maryland, expanding access uh, uh, to health care, uh, it's been a real, it's been a privilege uh, to be able to serve with you uh, and with your commitment uh, to that. So, so thank you very much. Other distinguished uh, members of the, uh, of, of the dais and each and every one of you, thank you for what you do each and every day uh, to improve the quality of health in Maryland and to ensure that every Marylander can enjoy the same uh, quality health outcomes, access to health uh, as their neighbors. Uh, and that is something that we do together uh, and no one uh, can do that uh, alone. I'm excited to be here as well, uh, along with uh, each and every one of you, uh, for this uh, great announcement, breaking ground on a new state-of-the-art building, 10-story high-rise, as the governor mentioned, employing thousands of people in, in, in erecting it and hundreds in operating it. And what amazing work uh, we expect to take place uh, inside the four walls uh, of this building. Over the last seven years, the governor and I, and with members of the General Assembly and others, um, have really uh, invested a lot of uh, effort uh, in connecting Marylanders to health care. Uh, we've done a little bit as well in improving the quality of health in Maryland. This building is going to do just that. The biomedical research that will take place, the interdisciplinary work between medicine and, and uh, with pharmacists and dentistry uh, is going to dramatically improve that quality of health care that is delivered uh, and the outcome in health uh, that Marylanders, Americans, and people around the world uh, will experience. Uh, so we're really excited uh, that uh, the people of Maryland, uh, through their governor and his budget, supported by the members of the General Assembly, are going to invest over the next four years $200 million in this project. $200 million. Very excited about that. Uh, and, uh, and that was my announcement. That's why I came to the podium, to announce $200 million. I'm working on my delivery. You know, the governor, the governor, because he's number one in the O'Malley Brown administration, he got up here and was able to tout all the number one statistics. That's what I always like when I get to come and he's not here, because then I get to tout the number one statistics. But you heard number one U.S. Chamber, number one best schools. So since I'm number two in the O'Malley Brown administration, they asked me to uh, make this uh, uh, announcement, which I made in the spring. Last spring, I was at the International Bio Conference in Chicago, and I announced then that Maryland was ranked number two in State Technology and Science Index. But why I'm excited to make that announcement again today is because the work that's going to happen in this building is going to propel us to number one in the not too distant future. Thanks a lot. I think we're up for the challenge. I'd now like to welcome to the podium uh, Baltimore's Mayor Stephanie Rollins Blake, my good friend, a vibrant leader, and an advocate for the city of Baltimore and the university at large. Her strong support has been critical to the growth of the growth and prosperity of the University and the School of Medicine. We're most grateful for her, for her help and strong support. So we're very happy to welcome her to the podium, Mayor. Hey, hey. Good morning, and Dean Reese, thank you for the kind introduction. Dean Emeritus Will Wilson, uh, I know how proud you must be having laid this the seed and you've passed the torch and, and I'm proud to see that you're still having an incredible impact on the community that you love. And I appreciate uh, the efforts of Dean Reese and the entire University of Maryland family uh, for taking the health science facility from concept to reality. You know, so, so many times we have dreams, but at University of Maryland, when we have dreams, we dream big and we make it happen. 
I want to thank the governor, the lieutenant governor, all of the state elected officials, our congressional delegation. We are Team Maryland. And we understand that when we work together, pooling our resources and looking for ways to strengthen uh, our, our uh, meds and our eds, we come out on top. So I agree with the Lieutenant Governor that we are poised to become number one. I'd also like to recognize President Perman, my co-chair for the University Partnership Initiative to transform uh, downtown's west side into a vibrant mixed-use income and mixed income neighborhood and everyone here has their role in the program mine is to do a short commercial for how, why this building is important and what we're doing in partnership to to integrate this building and all of you who will be using it into a vibrant west side just three blocks away from here west baltimore is coming alive again with sit-down restaurants and neighborhood serving retail. The university partnership stakeholders are working hard to soften the streetscape and thus shorten the perceived distance between the campus and local amenities. In order for this to be a campus, we have to work together to make sure that the, there are linkages between uh, the university buildings, the hospital buildings, and the amenities that are in very short walking distance. As a result, we are seeing a critical mass of university students and employees. We're always looking for more. Crossing Packer Street on foot, heading to Panera Bread or Nando's Restaurant to eat with their colleagues or meet classmates for coffee, for coffee even though you all could lay off my Starbucks down the road. I, I often have to wait too long in line and I, it's all the coats. I see the coats. I know, I know who you are. This building's public space will help strengthen that fresh link between the campus and downtown's west side. We need more of these types of projects because they attract new residents into downtown's west side and help spur new investment in an area that has yet to meet its full potential. To accelerate this revitalization process, the university partnership stakeholders are working closely with the state to establish the Bro Bromo, uh, Bromo Tower Arts and Entertainment District for good reasons, we just call it the Bromo District, so I don't get tripped up on it. The Bromo District helps generate buzz um, for the, it helped us to generate buzz for the new location for the Everyman, the Everyman Theater on Fayette Street, just four blocks from here. If you haven't been yet, it's beautiful. Check out the Everyman Theater. And I'm now uh, focused on regenerating Lexington Market as a food mecca for the university population, downtown workers, and to visitors of the Bromo District. Our capital improvement program and merchandising plan will be released early next spring, and you will see Lexington Market's interior and exterior made over. Make sure you come. And you'll see healthier and more attractive food offerings. My administration worked closely with the university on a needs analysis. What does that mean? We ask you what you wanted. Now we're trying to deliver it. We want to make sure that we've uh, got this. We survey 1,800 students, faculty, university employees, and we've implemented several of the near term uh, recommendations, including, as my con commercial continues, free Wi Fi at Lexington Market, a Facebook page that promotes the unique food vendors, and proactive law enforcement strategies to cut down on loitering, making it a more pleasant environment for all. We're also improving the appearance of outdoor vending displays. Couldn't do it without Dr. Perman, and I want to thank Dr. Reese as well. Both have been very busy on the Baltimore Street cor uh, Corridor, and I encourage them to keep it up. The investment that you've made in the Third Health Science Facility project will help us to at attract and retain top talent in the fields of pharmacy, dentistry, and medicine. The clustering of the talent under one roof will foster innovation and encourage unique and inclusive thinking across medical disciplines. Most importantly, your vision and your, your investment in Third Health Science Facility means that regional residents have access to the latest options in pharmaceuticals, dentistry, and medicine in the most transit-friendly section of the area of Baltimore. Continued hard work. I appreciate the partnership. Thanks and congratulations. Thank you, Mayor, Steph Mayor uh, Rollins Blake. We're looking forward to the exciting changes that are underway. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very pleased that we have with us three U.S. congressmen they, uh, representing the entire con uh, con congressional delegation of Maryland and uh, will be speaking to us in the following order. We have U.S. Congressman Elijah Cummings, 
U.S. Congressman Dutch Rufusberger, and U.S. Congressman John Sarbanes. They will be joining us at this time. Congressman uh, Cummings. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's certainly my honor and my privilege to be here this morning. And um, I got to tell you that uh, as I was uh, driving uh, down uh, Martin Luther King, coming from my house, which is only about five blocks away, where I've lived now for 33 years, um, I could not help Senator Conway but think about how far this university has come. It is astounding. I remember you could look at the university and see a few buildings. And now to see what we see is just simply remarkable. And those things don't happen by accident. They happen because of people like former Dean Wilson, Mike Kelly, people who have a vision, our governor, our members of the legislature, our lieutenant governor, our mayor. And I've thought about how significant it is that we have come to understand that it's not just good enough to inherit a situation, but we must build upon it and make it better. And I have come here to thank all of you, every single person that has anything to do with this, for making this happen. Dean Reese, you talked a little bit earlier about the footprints. You talked about how in 1975, a little over a million square feet we occupied, and now it's over six million. But you know, it's not just the footprints that are so important. It's the fingerprints. It's the fingerprints that we have on the present, but it's also the fingerprints that we will have on the future. The idea that people will be healed because of research that is done here. The idea that some mother whose baby may have perished before because of research done here that, may, that baby will grow up to not only bring joy to that mother and to that father, but bring gifts to the world. That's what this is all about. It's so much bigger than this moment. And when I think about all that we have done here, I guess, and what we're doing, it's about bringing life to life. Life to life. And so, again, I want to thank everybody. I mean, Larry Young has a say, you know, he says, Lottie Dottie and everybody. I want to thank all those folks. And I want to thank the scientists, you who probably, when you were very little, got interested in research. Perhaps somebody gave you a microscope for Christmas, or perhaps you saw some pain in your life, somebody die or somebody suffer, and you decided that you were going to make this your life mission. Perhaps it was some pain that led you to your passion, that led you to your purpose. But whatever brought you to this moment, the fact is, is that all of us are now intertwined in each other's lives and all of us becomes a part of each other's destiny. But it's not just our destiny that we are a part of. It's about generations yet unborn. And so, President Perman, Dean Reese, our governor, and I cannot say enough about our governor and our lieutenant governor. When I think about what's happening in Washington, I wish I could import this governor to be president along after, after President Obama, that is. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, you know how sometimes you just have to laugh at yourself. But the fact is that we need that kind of leadership to bring folks together. And he has done an outstanding job. But the vision, the things that he cares about and the lieutenant cares about, those are the things that are so very, very important to people. And so Dean Reese talked about grants. At the rate we're going in Washington, what will happen? Listen to what I'm about to say. NIH approved research projects will be funded only at about 10%. In other words, 90% of the approved projects won't be funded. I hate to tell you all that. But the reason why I mentioned that is that that's why it's so important that we have facilities like this. That's why it's so important that we attract the scientists and the folk doing this research. That's why it's so important that we have this major, major building. And so to Mike Cryer and to everybody who has anything to do with it, don't forget, today we pause to celebrate what is about to be. But what is about to be is something that will not just touch this moment, but will touch generations yet unborn. Thank you. Good morning. It's always tough to follow Elijah. But sitting here thinking and listening to what people are talking about, I'd like to talk about the theme of teamwork. I think Mayor Stephanie Rollins Blake talked about the teamwork. And you all out there, each and every one of you, whatever you do for the medical system, are part of one of the best teams in the world in what we do in the medical system. I have a really, University of Maryland medical system is very close to my heart. I was born here. I'm not going to tell you how many years ago. I will, 67 years ago. And by the way, anybody who's close to 60, 60 is a new 40. But then I, my life was saved at Maryland Shock Trauma. And I became a strong advocate for Maryland Shock Trauma, along with Senator Frank Kelly and a lot of other people that are here, and, and helping and working with the medical system. And it's a great system. And I do want to acknowledge all of the elected officials, not because I'm one of them, but because the elected officials have to be a part of that team that's going to have fun building such as this and to have vision. Uh, Martin, when you first became governor, uh, we had conversations about shock trauma and University of Maryland. And you've gone way beyond your commitment to look after this system and to let it grow and grow and grow. And by letting this system grow, it saved lives. The research has allowed us not only to save lives, but also to save money. And that's what Elijah and John and Cardin and Mikulski and all of our team in Washington are trying to tell some of the people on the other side. If you want to save money, we understand we have to deal with debt, you keep moving ahead and funding the area of, of life sciences and, and bio. The research makes a difference. We will, we will move forward. And we're not going to allow this to occur. What Elijah talked about, with the lack of research money at NIH, what can affect us here at Maryland and Hopkins and other, oh, I should have said Hopkins, but <laughs> and, and, other, and, and other areas. We're going to work day and night and try to get our friends on the other side, a lot who agree with us now, to get enough votes together so we can move, throw that sequestration away and move forward and fund projects like this. And we're going to do it. We got to stop us thinking, thinking, and we have to prove our case, but we're going to do it. Martin uh, talked about the jobs, which are one of the most important things that we do now. But we have, just in life sciences, in the state of Maryland, there's $10 billion in salaries. That's, that's huge, and that makes a difference. So, I was talking to Anthony Brown, I said, you know, with 12 speakers, uh, uh, you, the only way you're going to be acknowledged, other than Elijah Cumming, of course, who's a great speaker, is if you're quick and you sit down right away. Senators, delegates, county council member, mayor, I thank you. And I thank you also, leadership here. You've got a great leadership team I, with, with Dr. Reese and, and Dr. Perlman and, and our chancellor, Britt Kerwin. But the, but the leadership team needs good people, and each and every one of you have made a difference. Thank you for having me here today. Good morning, everybody. I want to say congratulations and thank you to Governor O'Malley, Lieutenant Governor Graham, Brown, the members of the General Assembly for this incredible investment in research and jobs 
um, in the economy of this uh, region. Um, I also want to thank the mayor. She really did lay out um, a beautiful vision for what's happening here um, on the west side of Baltimore. And it all works part and parcel with these kinds of investments because it's going to attract a top-notch research. It's going to make this a great place to live and to work. So thank you to the mayor and to the city council for, for making this area a place where we want to build and we want to invest. And then to um, Dean Reese, to the Chancellor Kerwin, to President Perman, uh, Dean Wilson, Chairman Cryer, Senator Kelly, all the people that are part of the University of Maryland institution, uh, which has really become a legacy institution here uh, in Baltimore and in Maryland. The investment that the General Assembly and the Governor and Lieutenant Governor are making in the University of Maryland is because of the incredible leadership that's brought to bear here. And so we thank you uh, for that. Uh, I credit the University of Maryland with getting my daughter started on a career in research. She's now getting a graduate degree in biology <laughs> research. She worked one summer as an intern at UMBI when she was in high school. And she loved the experience, and that sort of put her on uh, the path to where hopefully one day she'll be gainfully employed. So I, I know what these research institutions uh, can mean for young people who have a dream and a vision of where they want to go. And then just to close and to echo what, uh, what Dutch said and Elijah said, we're working as hard as we can to beat back this uh, sequester. It's really an insult to the researchers here institutions like the University of Maryland, uh, to legislatures like the Maryland legislature, leadership like Governor O'Malley and Lieutenant Governor Brown that we're budgeting in this non-thinking way in Washington. Uh, so we're going to work as hard as we can to overcome that to make sure that these critical research dollars continue to flow to institutions like the University of Maryland, knowing that every dollar of, that comes to this institution will be spent well and will make a huge difference in improving health care and saving lives. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Congressman, all of you. You know the University of Maryland Baltimore, you know this, is part of the University System of Maryland, a collection of exceedingly high quality institutions. And the reason for that quality, the number one reason for that quality, is the incredible leadership we have in Chancellor William Britt Kerwin, who uh, without argument uh, is the foremost expert in higher education across this nation. And uh, I am privileged to call him my boss, and I am exceedingly privileged to introduce him to you. Jay, thank you very much for that uh, very generous uh, introduction. It's very, so much appreciated. I am pleased to join all of you as we break ground today on this remarkable facility that will set a new standard for its capacity to support cutting edge, transdisciplinary, and translational research in the health sciences. It's an honor to share this occasion with the people that made this great day possible. It's my pleasant duty to express appreciation to them on behalf of the University System of Maryland and its Board of Regents. First and foremost, Governor O'Malley, who saw immediately what this building could mean to Baltimore, the university, and indeed, the state and nation, and who boldly redirected funding and advance the building in the state's capital queue. Lieutenant Governor Brown, who joined the governor as a champion of this facility. Members of the General Assembly, who supported its funding and place in the capital queue. Our outstanding members of Congress, who provide such great leadership for our nation and state. Mayor Rawlings Blake a graduate of this university who has been at the forefront in helping the university better integrate its remarkable resources into her efforts to advance this great city. Bob Krenchak and the, U, uh, the UMS team 
without whose support this project just would not have been possible. And Michael Cryer and all the friends and advocates of this university who helped push this project across the finish line. But two people deserve very special recognition and thanks on this day. University of Maryland President Jay Perman, who has an exciting vision for this university and placed this facility at the top of his priorities. And of course, the Dean, Al Reese, who first conceived and then became the main champion for this project. This facility is so massive and so state of the art that funding requires multiple sources of revenue well beyond just state funds. This was not easy to pull off. Al, as you know, there were dark days when people said, it just can't be done. But Al, you didn't let that stop you. You were inspirationally indefatigable. Although this was a team effort, you were our Joe Flacco, <laughs> who completed the passes when we needed them and brought us to this victory we celebrate today. There is so much about this amazing facility, and you've heard it uh, from other speakers. But most importantly to me, this facility will be, the, will be the site of key biomedical breakthroughs and advances made possible by the great scientists we see represented in this room today, who will find new cures for dreaded diseases and save untold numbers of lives in the years to come. That's what we really celebrate today. And again, I thank all who made it possible. Thank you, uh, Chancellor Kerwin. We're going to move on to our next speaker, and that is uh, Mr. Michael Cryer who was the chairman of the School of Medicine Board of Visitors and president of the Cryer Group. But let me just say a, a word about uh, 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 Mr. Cryer. And I want to do that in light of uh, Chancellor Kerwin uh, giving me a little bit more credit uh, than maybe I deserve. But this has been such a team sport. Mr. Cryer has been an outstanding leader, advocate, counselor, and most importantly, a strategist in, in, in this process. He has been invaluable in helping to bring this building project to fruition. And so the, both the university and the school are both in his debt. So to you, Michael, I want to say thank you for your hard work, your support, and your creative thinking all the time. Michael. Thank you very much, Dean Reese, and thank you to all of our very special friends here behind us, and to all of you who, uh, in your own way, have contributed so much to this great moment to this great institution and to making this university and our city and state so special. The fact is, it takes strong leadership to make big things happen. And this new health science research facility is indeed a big, big thing. It really is. Not just in size, but in impact to the people of Baltimore, to the state of Maryland, to the School of Medicine to the University of Maryland and to the millions of people around the world who will benefit from the discoveries and innovation that will take place in this facility. This building is truly a tribute to the leadership that made it happen. It took the relentless commitment and determination of Dean Reese and to so many leaders here among us, our good friend, uh, Dean Wilson, who, who left, uh, and we thank him for his foresight. It would not happen without leadership, it would not happen. When I hear about the amazing, absolutely amazing discoveries that take place at the University of Maryland School of Medicine every day, I realize what a vital role we play in improving the health and well-being of our citizens. And when I think about the research that will take place in this new building, in genome sciences, cancer research, cardiovascular science, brain science, stem cell biology, and infection science, just to name a few, I realize how critical this facility will be for our faculty to engage with new technology and laboratories that will exist behind these remarkable glass facades. But please join me in recognizing all of the leaders that have made this great day possible. It is their vision and tireless dedication 
that inspires all of us to believe that anything is indeed possible. Thank you. Thank you.